Well, it certainly was a lot warmer in these stands back in September, but then again, the enthusiasm for Nebraska football wasn't quite as hot as it is right now. At that time, if somebody would have told you that Nebraska was going to beat Oklahoma by a wide margin, win the Big 8, and go to the Orange Bowl, well, they probably wouldn't have believed you back in September. Nebraska probably didn't expect such a rude opening day welcome from the Iowa Hawkeyes. Teams haven't feared a Hawkeye football team for a long time. But the Hawkeye defense slowed the Husker offense and quarterback Mark Maurer. And the offense put 10 points on the board early. The final in Iowa City, Iowa 10, Nebraska 7. A victory that stunned Nebraska fans and Iowa fans who had no idea their Hawkeyes would end up in the Rose Bowl January 1st. The Huskers hosted Florida State in their home opener the next weekend, and junior I-back Roger Craig decided he would run off the frustration of the Iowa upset. It was quite a show, the best of Craig's Big Red career. I rushed for uh, 234 yards, and I had a nice run, 94-yard touchdown run, and that was kind of, you know, special for me. The Florida State victory proved special for all the Corn Huskers, special for the defense, which played quite well on this day, and special for the special teams, which provided two touchdowns for the Corn Huskers as Nebraska whipped the Seminoles 34 to 14. Highly ranked Penn State moved into Lincoln next. Nebraska thought it could beat the Nittany Lions by containing running back Kurt Warner, who was off to a fast start. Good strategy, but lousy execution. Warner erupted for 238 yards. A lot of that yardage set up Brian Franco field goals, and he didn't miss. Franco kicked five field goals as Penn State beat the Huskers 30-24. to Once again, Nebraska fans were stunned by the victory. They knew the Huskers were below 500 at 1-2 and, and out of the top 20. That doesn't happen often at Nebraska. The talk around Lincoln was not pleasant, and Tom Osborne became the object of some criticism. We uh, didn't play well at all on that given day defensively, and part of it was the Penn State had a great offensive team. And part of it was we had some injuries to our defensive tackles. And uh, uh, I didn't think there was anything that was uh, irreparable. You know, I, things that we did to lose the game were things that could be corrected. I thought we'd played a very good football team on that day. So I wasn't as discouraged as the fans were. A lot of eyes were watching the defense as Auburn came into town next. And defensive end Jimmy Williams came up with a big play early. I uh, set up a... Uh, a, uh, a fumble recovery guy on the three-yard line to set up, a, I guess, to go ahead and win where offense went on and scored and we jumped up 10-3 uh, or whatever it was and kind of got things on track from, from that point on and probably from that point on the rest of the season. Many of the Huskers thought the Auburn game was a turning point. It also marked the introduction of a young quarterback, Turner Gill. He would play a much larger role as the season progressed but on this day, the final, Nebraska 17, Auburn 3. The conference season began the next week against Colorado. Nate Mason was out for the rest of the season because of a knee injury, so Osborne decided Turner Gill might be the spark the offense needed. The spark set off an offensive fireworks show. Gill threw four touchdowns in his first start, equaling a school record, and Nebraska's 42 first downs had an NCAA record. The offense piled up 719 yards in all. The numbers looked great on paper, even better on the scoreboard. Nebraska 59, Colorado nothing. The next week it was Kansas State in Manhattan, and the Huskers had not forgotten how to score. Gill looked good again, throwing two touchdowns, and we got a look at a new sophomore eyeback, Mike Rozier. Kansas State hardly saw him at all on this 93-yard run as Nebraska won big again, 49-3. Next, the Huskers moved into Missouri to meet the undefeated Tigers. Each team boasted about its great defense. The game was as good as advertised. Turner Gill showed signs of inexperience in the rugged Missouri game, but he engineered the winning touchdown drive in the final two minutes. 
With the ball on the Nebraska 49, Gill hit Todd Brown with a 24-yarder on a critical third down play. Two plays later, Gill again to Brown. That put it on the four. Time continued to roll. Finally, seconds left, third and goal from the three. Bill Bates broke through the middle. Nebraska had escaped with a 6-0 victory. A pivotal game for Nebraska. The Huskers remained undefeated. And a pivotal game for Missouri. The Tigers never threatened again in the Big 8 after this tough loss to Nebraska. By now, people were calling Turner Gill the difference between the Nebraska that was 1-2 and, and the Nebraska that had won four straight. People have always paid attention to Turner Gill when he was a prep football star in Fort Worth, Texas and a pro baseball prospect. Turner has been the object of a tremendous amount of media attention and why, I really don't know. I mean, he's a, he's a very fine football player. Mike Rozier has come on as a true sophomore and made great contribution to our football team. Irving Fryer has too. And, uh, and yet, for some reason, Turner has captured the imagination of the fans. Is it kind of a mystique, too? You went into Texas and took away a Texas ball player? I think it could be. I, I think a lot of it went back to the recruiting, the fact that he, oh, he considered Oklahoma, that it was the pro baseball thing, and so I think an awful lot of attention got rolling before he ever arrived. But he's, uh, he's probably the most talented uh, quarterback we've had. Kansas came next for the Huskers. Gill played well again, but on this day he took a back seat to running backs Mike Rogier and Phil Bates. Bates with two touchdowns, while Rogier put on his best performance, 179 yards, including this 49-yard touchdown run. And Nebraska turned on the offense in the second half to whip Kansas 31 to 15. Next, the Huskers traveled to Oklahoma State, expecting a tough defensive battle. Instead, the Cowboys turned out to be very nice hosts. The Huskers put on another offensive show, a 45-7 route of Oklahoma State. Roger Craig re-emerged in this game, running for 121 yards. This one went 69 yards. But for most of Nebraska's winning streak, Craig watched Mike Rogier. But Craig watched him from the bench. I was making mistakes, you know, midseason. And, uh... It was, um, it, was, it, was, it was fair to Mike to start, you know, because I was making too many mistakes. And if you make a lot of mistakes, you know, you, sh you shouldn't be in there anyway. And, like, I had trouble, you know, holding on to the ball. But, it just, but this is something that happens. You can't predict when you're going to fumble or anything. But um, I'm happy with, with the way they, you know, alternate us. Anthony Slick Steele sang the same old song to start the Iowa State game. And the Huskers' performance during the Iowa State game, well, it was the same old song, too. Some good defense, some special teams excitement, courtesy of Irving Fryer. Turner Gill did his part, a three-yard score to star-spangled steals, and Nebraska's sixth straight Big 8 victory wrapped up the Big 8 title and a trip to Miami. Still, one thing was missing. We always want, you know, to beat Oklahoma. You know the old adage, only death and taxes are certain. Well, in Nebraska, there's one more. The Cornhuskers always want to beat Oklahoma. The Huskers had not beaten Oklahoma in Norman since 1971. The Sooners' first possession this year was almost scary. Stanley Wilson and Buster Rhymes ran up huge pieces of real estate, and before you knew it, Oklahoma led 7-0. But once the Mark Maurer-led offense got rolling, the end came very quick for Oklahoma. Roger Craig with a 19-yard run, 10-7 Nebraska. Then it was Phil Bates' 16-yard touchdown, Nebraska up 17-7. Then Maurer to Mitch Crank, 6-yard scoring pass. Nebraska 24-7. After Buster Rhymes bobbles a kickoff, Phil Bates scored again. Nebraska not only won this one, but won big, 37-14. A season that started so inauspiciously ended perfectly for Nebraska fans. A win over Oklahoma and a trip to the Orange Bowl. It was time for a couple of days off. Then it was time to think about Clemson. Yep. The Clemson Tigers just may be the most unknown number one team ever. The Tigers aren't known as a football power. They never won a national championship in football or in any other sport for that matter. Beginning of the season, most polls or big magazines like this 
We're predicting the Tigers to even finish in the top 20 or finish first in their conference, the ACC. Well, it's the end of the season now, and the Tigers are the only undefeated team of the nation. They don't have to defend their record to anyone, but if they did, their defense probably could do it. People started noticing Clemson's defense the third week of the season. That's when the defense neutralized Georgia and Herschel Walker. The Tigers beat Georgia 13 to three, and Clemson began receiving some national attention, something ACC football teams just don't get. But Clemson's defense, led by safety Terry Kennard and linebacker Jeff Davis, put together some impressive numbers. Second in the nation in scoring defense, seventh in rushing defense, and eighth in total defense. Clemson's offense put some points on the board also, especially against Wake Forest when the Tigers won 82 to 24. Quarterback Homer Jordan is one of those pesky types who can hurt Nebraska running and passing. He accounted for nearly 2,000 yards total offense this season. If Jordan threw, flanker Perry Tuttle often found a spectacular way to catch. Tuttle caught 47 passes for 827 yards and seven touchdowns. Running backs Cliff Austin and Chuck McSwain were the other offensive threats for Clemson, but the Nebraskan offense knows who it has to stop to beat Clemson. As a team, I think that uh, we probably want to control their running game, uh, try to shut down Perry Tuttle, who's a very fine receiver, and try to contain Homer Jordan, uh, who is a is very good scrambler and breaks containment quite a bit.